you everyone for attending our talk. Uh, my name is Mohanad Hamad, and uh, I'll be presenting uh, with my co-author Jay Boo, who is right next to me. Uh, we will take turns presenting this. And uh, uh, the, the paper we're presenting is Learning Physics Guided Neural Networks with Competing Physics Loss, a Summary of Results in Solving Eigenvalue Problems. So in recent three years, it has been shown that uh, adding what is called a physics loss term can help improve a neural network's accuracy and ability to generalize. Uh, this paradigm is called physics guided machine learning, and it can be done by making modification to the architecture or by modifying the optimization process. In this work, we focus on the latter case. So for a black box model, we usually have a loss term that is derived from comparing the labels with the predictions. However, this purely data-driven approach fails to generalize well. So a physics loss term is added to the optimization and the relative weight of each term is adjusted by means of a constant lambda, as you can see here. Uh, this paradigm is referred to as physics guided neural networks. Uh, doing this, uh, the model can learn to generalize better beyond seen data and avoid giving results that are physically inconsistent, inconsistent as we can see in this figure from uh, Karpat et al. So uh, the physics uh, guided uh, physics loss can help us avoid these uh, inc physically inconsistent models. However, lambda is usually constant that is assigned based on intuition or hyperparameter tuning, which could be a hassle sometimes, as we know. So this problem is even more pronounced when there are multiple loss terms added together. Uh, in, this, in that case, the interplay between those terms becomes tricky. Moreover, multiple loss terms can compete. For example, looking at this figure we see here, uh, one can see that optimizing uh, physics loss one first could lead to be being stuck uh, in one of these local minima instead of the global minima. Uh, whereas if emphasis was given to physics loss two first and then shifted to physics loss one, we would get to the global minima. This, this suggests that uh, an adaptive tuning method would be essential for some problems. Uh, we demonstrate this uh, by, uh, for the rest of the paper by studying eigenvalue problems. Uh, so in many physics problems, we are interested in finding the highest or lowest eigenvalue and its eigenvector. So given an input matrix, uh, the model, uh, the model's output would be the eigenvector. The eigenvalue can then be uh, easily calculated. We choose this type of problem because it is interesting from the physics point of view, and because numerically solving eigenvalue problems is known to be expensive. Uh, while training machine learning models can also be expensive, obtaining the answer once the training is complete is done in constant time, making machine learning approaches worthwhile in the long run especially if the model generalizes well beyond the seen scarce data. So in this paper, we demonstrate our approach with two eigen-solving case studies. One is uh, Schrodinger's equation, and the other is Maxwell's uh, equation. So my co-author here, Jay Boo, will talk about the first problem, and then I'll come back and talk about the second problem. So I leave you with Jay. All right, cool. So now we are interested in solving the icing chain model, which is a very normal problem in condensed mat uh, physics. So the, the problem can be formulated uh, as a magnetic field applied to a system with n particles, and which is described by the Hamiltonian matrices. So this entire system and is governed by the Schrodinger equation, which is known as take a form of a, a, a of a, or eigen equation. So we're interested in predicting the wave function, which is the eigenvector of the Hamiltonian, and state and energy is the corresponding eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian. So the wave function can be useful to obtain quantities, and, uh, for example, the spin configurations. And we're interested in, find, interested in finding out the ground state wave function, which is the eigenvector with lowest energy and which, uh, or lowest en uh, eigenvalue. So we are not uh, interested in finding out the, the absolute value, which is uh, the magnitude is not interesting for us uh, for predicting wave functions. We're only trying to find a wave function that can maximize cosine similarity between our predicted spectrum and the target spectrum. So now we have this uh, skin, uh, the framework of training PGML, uh, which is a physics guided machine learning framework for in spin icing problem. So the A is the uh, input, which is the Hamiltonian into the neural network. We're going to predict the eigenvalue and eigenvector for that 
a particular input a matrix. So we have two last terms here. So we get limited number of labeled data, which is getting from an eigen solver, which we will we'll denote it as DTR. And this will be, uh, this, uh, the model will be trained using MSE, mean square error, on those labeled data. And we also have a set, a larger set of unlabeled data, which is DU. So the DTR and the union of the DU, which is we train our neural network on PGLAS will be, uh, and we will describe it later on both the labeled and unlabeled data. So the, the both last terms will go back to use gradient descent to uh, back, propagate back into the neural network to update. So now the, uh, the first physics guided loss is the character, uh, character list, sorry, the characteristic loss. The input is the Hamiltonian predictor spectrum and eigenvalue, which is the energy. The constraint is showing our equations that we said before. So now we take the, the L2 norm of that residual. The, noticeably, there is a turn at the denominator, which is the normalized uh, turn to try to avoid trivial solution to pre by predicting the spectrum to be all zero. So we have the second physical law. This loss is trying to get the lowest energy and try to enforce the constraint to find out the ground state energy. So uh, this loss is, uh, is designed as the exponential form of the eigenvalue that by minimizing S loss, uh, spectrum loss, we're going to get the smallest eigenvalue. So there is a problem in, in this uh, two loss function set and two loss term settings. The two laws can compete with each other, compete with, with each other in our observations. So the C loss, which is the uh, eigen, uh, eigen equation, might have many eigen pairs that all of them can satisfy the C loss to, to get a zero value out of the C loss, but we're only interested in the lowest energy one. So the, the key idea is, is here. So PG laws can sometimes compete with each other, so leading to poor local minima. So now we are interest, uh, we're introducing our strategy called uh, uh, adaptive tuning, which is we're using the cold start and annealing for the C loss and S loss. So we notice that there, uh, so the C loss has much poor, uh, poor uh, much poor surface, while S loss, which is monotonic function, has nicer surface. So we are going to optimize on S loss first because it has nicer surface while avoiding to, to optimize C loss initially. So the key idea is we can, um, in the takeaway message is that if you have multiple loss turns that which are competing with each other and one of them has more local minimums and one of them has less local minimums, which uh, means it has nicer surface and you can optimize the loss turn that with nicer surface first and then go into the one with much nasty lost surface. So this is the uh, a more intuitive uh, illustration of what co-start and milling is. So you see that the coefficient of the both term, one of them will increase, one of them will decrease. So note that the S loss with the spectrum loss take the exponential form, it will never go to zero, but eventually we want to make it to zero because we only want the model to satisfy the uh, eigen equation. So here, uh, just to give a, a review about uh, what we have for the training set and, uh, and the test set. So we trained on the DTR, which is labeled BX smaller than 0 0.5, which uh, corresponds to a ferromagnetic field. And this, so this DUI, which will correspond to ferromagnetic and uh, paramagnetic uh, domain. So our uh, loss turns will going to have mean square error, S loss and C loss, and we are going to apply a nullian cold start in our proposed method. So the coffee PGNN is our proposed methods. All others are baselines. The black box CNN is just trained using the labeled data. The PINN analog were trained using uh, only, only physics loss without using any labeled data. PGNN analog trained on both physics loss and uh, MSC labeled on the label data, but without using any adapted tuning method. Multitask learning PGN and will use a, a cyclic a learning, a cyclic coefficient between the two last turns. 
So the ablations will have only trained on the, the uh, DTR and also one of them will have no spectrum loss and one of them will be label free which means it without using any label data we can see that label data can improve the performance of for pgml models for many existing methods they tend they tended to use no label data but only relies on physics to, uh, to find out a solution we find out that label data can actually stabilize the prediction so using unlabeled data for computing fiji loss ensures out of distribution generalizability so adaptive and nilin co-start are important to achieve go to to reach uh, global to good global minima so we can see this is another example of our uh, our proposed um, pg a uh, coffee pg genome, pgn with the baselines we can see that our coffee pgn can consistently perform well with very small amount of data as well as uh, it it performs very uh, stable across different training sites. So we show that with the introducing the physics loss, when used it correctly, we can generalize unseen phases. So the training phase is only BX smaller than 0 0.5, and only COVID PGN, PGN can generalize well to unseen phases. While when using, uh, when constructed the, the PGML, framework to in an incorrect way, though you're using the correct physics laws, you cannot still, you cannot generalize well into the unseen phases. Thank you, Jay. Okay, so one, one other direction we took to demonstrate the effectiveness of adding the physics constraint is that shown in the work of Lee et al on lost landscape visualizations. So here we wanted to show whether coffee PGNN leads to better generalization as well. In these figures, the blue dot in the middle is, is the model we trained, and the 2D landscape surrounding it is representing a cross-section of the multidimensional space around the model. Obviously, the lower the loss, like the lower the color is, uh, the better. So starting from a black box model, we can see that uh, using only the training MSE loss without any physics constraint, the training data is well fit here, but uh, the test data not as well fit, it's not really a minima, and the PG loss is really high. Right. Uh, so, uh, what happens when we only we do coffee PG and NBIS, We only take the training data. So we got we get really the same result. So using only the trained data, we we fit the the training MSE is really low, uh, test MSE not so much, uh, and PG loss is really high. Now, what we what happens if we do the opposite? What when we do the opposite? Uh, uh, we train, we, we're using the physics constraint without uh, taking into account the MSE of the training data, then both the, the training MSE and the test MSE are really high, even though the PG loss is low. So this, this reminds us that both data and physics constraint are important to get a well-rounded model. And this is what happens when you actually use Coffee PGNN. Uh, which is which is using the training data and the test and we training data for MSE and test data and training data for physics loss. So if we put these together, uh, we get like a low MSE and training, low MSE and testing, and low uh, uh, physics guided loss, which is what we want. That that shows like good generalization. So now if we move to the next application, which is electromagnetic propagation. Uh, uh, this, we use this to demonstrate the efficacy of coffee PGNN uh, in, on a larger scale. So we resolve this problem. This problem we take uh, 10 periodically stratified layers of equal length with a refractive index n uh, for each layer. We limit the possible values of n uh, for simplicity to 1, 2, 3, and 4. This gives a permittivity epsilon here for each layer uh, that is n squared. Uh, sorry, one second. Uh, I lost my notes. Apologize for that. Okay, I'll continue. So yeah, so here we can we can describe this problem uh, again using the eigenvalue pro uh, uh, equation. So A is uh, is the, in the describes the is the input and describes the structure and the permittivity epsilon. And KZM is the eigenvalue. It's the propagation constant along all these layers. And 
uh, finally, why is it not moving? Yeah, finally, HM is the eigenvector we're interested in, which is the coefficients of the Fourier transform of the electro electromagnetic field. Uh, so here I said this problem is, is of a bigger scale. So the input is 401 by 401 complex values matrices, matrix, uh, which makes this problem of uh, 25,000 uh, uh, bigger scale, bigger uh, times bigger. Uh, and to demonstrate how it works in scarcity of data, it's 370 training data points. Uh, and we only use n equals one for the training. And this way we limit uh, the, the data that the model is shown for, for training. And for testing, we use data that has n from one, two, three, and four. So this, this is a test to the model's ability to generalize beyond seen data in the training. Okay. okay. So here are our results uh, for uh, in, in terms of uh, cosine similarity. And the reason we, we, we take this cosine similarity is uh, in the physics domain, we, we care about the profile of the Fourier uh, of the Fourier components rather than uh, absolute MSE. So as you can see here, uh, when we compare the black box with Kofi PGN, uh, Kofi PGN definitely has a much better cosine similarity than uh, the, the the black box. Uh, and finally. Uh, we don't want to like uh, overstate our results, so we want to also show what, what what problems we have. So if we can, if we compare the average absolute error, like in the coffee PG, in, in the uh, in the eigenvalue equation, we can see that we we still have a lot of error, even though the profile is similar to the correct profile. Mm -hmm. The absolute error is much higher than what we get with MATLAB or eigensolvers. But we want to also show that the average time, once we train, the training takes a lot of time, like a couple multiple hours. Uh, the still the when uh, when, infer, uh, when given an equation for inference, uh, we are much faster. So the argument we want to make here is, yeah, we still have work to do in terms of optimization and getting a better uh, model. But once we figure that out, we we have a, an advantage in terms of speed. So yeah, just to wrap up, uh, we, we have shown that adaptive tuning of multiple loss terms is, is necessary in some problems, especially in eigenvalue eigen problems. Uh, and we showed it on the quantum physics problem and electromagnetic propagation problem. And we shown that both the labeled data and the PG loss are important. We, we cannot do with one without the other. And finally, we have scalability issues. So, when, when the system is too big, so we need to work on that to make the accuracy higher and the training time lower. And we have more details in our full paper on archive if you're interested. And finally, we just want to uh, make like uh, acknowledge uh, NSF's uh, funding in this work as shown here. So thank